This is the MV-22 Osprey, flown by the United States Marine Corps. With a unit cost of about $84 million, it's the world's first production tilt rotor aircraft, which means it takes off and lands vertically like a helicopter. All right, get to go fast. But flies like a traditional turboprop airplane. We don't need that runway to land on, and we don't need any type of air traffic control agency to get us there. We can do it ourselves. When grounded, its rotor blades fold into itself, making it small enough to travel on naval carriers. The primary role uh, is what we call assault support. What that means is that we're good at carrying people and stuff places. When you're good to kiss off and maintain uh, 1,500 feet over the range. Insider spent a day at Marine Corps Air Station New River in North Carolina to find out what it takes to fly the Osprey. Before flying an Osprey, Marine Corps pilots must receive a four-year college degree and attend flight school to learn the basics. After that, you gain your wings and you show up at the fleet and you get about two months, three months to learn how to fly the Osprey. Osprey pilots spend 20 hours training in a simulator that was off limits to our cameras. I wanted to have a plane that was at the forefront of where the Marine Corps wanted to send things. Turns out that this was ex exactly the right plane for me. Today when we go fly, we're gonna do a whole bunch of various flight profiles. We're gonna go and shoot tail gunnery, and then we transition over to doing confined area landings. The training mission begins with a briefing in the squadron ready room. We're gonna take off out of New River as a section. For the departure, it's gonna be a standard vertical takeoff to climb up to our en route altitude of 3,500 feet. Safety is one of the most important topics of any Osprey mission briefing. Three U.S. Marines are missing right now off the coast of Australia. There have been 33 accidents, resulting in 42 reported deaths since the Osprey's first flight in 1989. The MV-22 originally, in its induction phases and in testing, unfortunately ended up having a few accidents along the way, things that were worked out essentially over the years. The Osprey became operational in 2007. And since then, safety components like nacelles and software have been redesigned and reconfigured. I have over 800 flight hours on this plane with, with zero issues. That's in no small part to the maintenance efforts that are put forth by the Marines every day here. Crew chiefs at New River work as plane maintainers when they're not aiding on missions. Even the smallest things on the Osprey have to be looked at and are kept in good working order. We make sure that we're, we're flying the safest aircraft possible. Before every flight, pilots and crew do a walkthrough of the Osprey to ensure everything is in working order. This is the Osprey, just a big overview here. Each engine provides you 6,150 shaft horsepower. So what that means for me up front is that I can go from zero to 280 knots and climb from the surface all, all the way up to 25,000 feet. This is the air-to-air -air refueling probe. This thing sticks out and lets me plug and refuel off of all kinds of different refueling assets and extends my range out beyond three hours out to all the way my limits that I can just stay awake for. These big nacelles here contain the engine itself and then also will contain all the different gearbox systems and different accessory drive systems that keep my aircraft powered up and flying both hydraulically and electrically. We have seats all up and down the left and right side that hold uh, 24 troops and then any type of cargo that we can do here. We have a lot of redundancy. We have three hydraulic systems. We have three flight control computers. We have four generators that will operate and they can all back each other up. So if any one component fails, there's numerous layers of backup and redundancy that allow this plane to keep flying and uh, keep fighting regardless of what happens. It's a gorgeous day to go fly. The downwash coming off of the Osprey is about the same as a Category 2 hurricane. 170 at Takeoff begins with the rotors in the vertical position lifting the plane off the ground. After reaching the desired altitude, pilots convert the aircraft to airplane mode. I have what's called a thumb wheel. On the throttle, uh, there is a, a little knob that I just move with my thumb. It's as easy as this. It takes little to no effort for me. What that means inside the plane and what the plane is doing is that I have uh, three different hydraulic systems that are controlling uh, what's called conversion actuators. And these conversion actuators are gigantic screws. And those screws uh, twist and make the whole nacelle structure move up and down. The crew flies north to begin the first exercise of the mission. 
firing the Osprey's machine gun at targets on the ground. On the MV-22, we have a ramp-mounted weapon system. We'll be firing the M240 Delta today, which is a 7.62 by 51 caliber uh, belt-fed machine gun. The ramp-mounted weapon system is used in a defensive role as we're carrying troops and cargo into an area. If we're engaged, we can effectively suppress that enemy fire or threat. The standard four-person Osprey crew consists of two pilots and two crew chiefs. So I'll be leading the aircraft through the flight profile. You're all level, came back up. We're gonna go ahead and try going fast again. I serve as the link between the pilots and the back of the plane. That's between our cargo, anyone we're carrying. I shoot the gun, uh, you name it. I suggest converting to see if we can get some of that back. Yep, one second. Copy. Sergeant Leneve will also be helping train an additional member on today's flight. I'm Lance Corporal Trantho, and I'm a crew chief on the V-22 Osprey. Every day is a new challenge and a new opportunity to learn something. Today we're going to be simulating engagement by a surface-to-air threat, uh, which is going to be a missile system, and we're going to attempt to suppress that threat. All right, Lenny, we're coming uh, across the runway target now. There's multiple vehicles and stuff on the on the runway. All the fires are going to be north of the runway, so on the left side of the aircraft right now. Copy. I've got, I've got a target. Contact. Two targets. Steel targets. Crew chiefs train to aim and fire the M240 Delta using the plane's forward momentum. It definitely takes a lot of concentration um, with the effects of your forward momentum. Getting the rounds to hit your target, you have to aim in a certain way so that your rounds hit with the proper momentum. If their target is to the left of the plane, they aim low and left. If they shoot off the right side of the plane, they aim high and right. We're going to basically be looking for good uh, impacts on the target. In the training mission's second phase, the crew flies over a field to practice landing in a confined area without a runway. So we'll do uh, what we call tactical straight-ins, where we go from uh, airplane mode, um, going 240 knots, and bring it all the way to a hover inside the zone. So it's going to take us from this in-route airplane, and then the computer and the software, the automation, is going to fly the plane all the way along a course of flight and bring us into a hover over a specific landing point. So it's pretty cool. Forward thrust comes off the propellers. That generates lift over the wing, just like any traditional fixed-wing aircraft. Then, pilots redirect that thrust by converting into helicopter mode. We start shifting that lift vector backwards to slow ourselves down, or forward to accelerate ourselves, and we go from there. After completing confined area landings and takeoffs, the focus shifts to the third exercise of the mission training crew chiefs how to measure the plane's distance to the ground with just their eyes. Okay, guys, traffic going 10 o'clock, high, no factor. Okay. They have to calibrate their eyes to give uh, accurate distance calls to the deck, and that's, that's a challenge, and it changes based on what you're expecting to see. They need to happen quickly. They need to say exactly the right thing at the right time so that we know what we need to do and take, uh, take that information on as like actionable information. So she'll, she'll get it down uh, during a daytime landing inside a grassy zone. And then we'll take her and we'll fly her at night and we'll put on uh, MVGs, night vision goggles on her and she'll have a 40 degree field of view looking through toilet paper tubes. And then all of that uh, distance estimation that she's worked on starts to go away. So that's part of the training that we, we work with them on. Flying the Osprey for the, for the Marine Corps has meant to me that I can be operationally employed in a very wide range of mission profiles. As we shift over to the Pacific Theater, what we're dealing with are longer transits over water without land bases for us to operate from. The Osprey is also used to provide humanitarian aid. Personally, I've done uh, hurricane relief operations in Puerto Rico. Uh, and I've been able to deliver food and water to people that have needed it. We were able to land uh, in zones, baseball fields, all across the island. The people were writing uh, help in their yards and stones and, and trash to get uh, the Ospreys to come in and land, and we were able to bring food and water and medical supplies all over the island. Today was great. It was a good flight. A lot of the future operation concepts of the Marine Corps are gonna focus on the Osprey, doing more of what it does and doing it better. 
I'm actually applying to the Naval Academy right now because I am interested in becoming a pilot. If I get accepted, I'll have four more years in school and graduate and commission as an officer. The whole way that the Marine Corps trains is to add more assets and be able to bring a more complicated fight to the battlefield. We're just a small aspect and a small piece of it, but that's what we bring to the fight. Hey Jake, if at any point you get sick, uh, it is not uncommon. Just let us know, we can level the plane off, get you some fresh air, and uh, help you out a bit.